Hey guys, welcome to Woodwork Life. So this is kind of a special project for me. Two of my biggest hobbies have always been electronics and woodworking. And this kind of brings those two things together in the wooden PC case. And not only that, this is actually kind of a special PC case. And I want to thank my partners from Gigabyte, AMD, and Corsair for making that happen. This is also associated with a pretty big release that AMD has coming up in the next couple of months. So keep an eye out for that too, where I'm going to be putting the rest of the components in this thing. So without further ado, let's jump in and see how this whole case went together. The first part of this project was laying out all the joinery and dimensions in SketchUp. I didn't want to have to think about that once I got in the shop and I wanted to kind of get an idea of what it would look like before I made any cuts. Once I had my design finalized, it was time to cut my lumber to the rough dimensions before I started any joinery. I swear stock prep on this project was probably 80% of the time I spent. When you're cutting hand cut, or really any joinery, it's really important to pay attention to these steps. Having square and straight stock now can save you a lot of headaches later, so take your time to set up your tools and make sure everything's just so. Also, when you can, work from your plans and try to batch out your cuts. Working from the same measurement's great, but working from the same setting on a tool guarantees you the same results over and over again. I wanted to make the joints in these panels actually pretty obvious, so I wasn't particularly trying to match grain or whatever. I actually wanted the grain and the joints to stand out, give it a little more modern look. I ripped the cherry and the sycamore into even sized pieces, so I could glue them together into larger panels. If you wanted to save some time here, I guess you could make it out of plywood if you wanted to, but where's the fun in that? I took the two nicest pieces of sycamore from the lumber that I got for the front and back of the case. I really wanted to showcase the gnarly quarter sawn grain so that it would really showcase the wood I was using. I used a biscuit joiner on the side panels to make sure that all the joints aligned just right. That way I didn't have to do quite as much sanding later on. I also worked with just regular tight bond one or whatever you call it, the non-waterproof stuff, so I had a little bit of extra time to work to set these up. I guess I could use hide glue or epoxy to give me a little bit more working time, but type on one gave me plenty, and I could have used dominoes instead of biscuits, but they're a lot more expensive, and for this application there was plenty of glue surface area to just use biscuits. After I got those all glued up, I started working on the top and bottom of the case as well. I didn't use biscuits on those, but I probably should have. It would have kept them a little straighter and reduced the amount of sanding I needed to do. I let those cook overnight, and the next day I popped them out of the clamps and got to scraping off the glue and sanding up a nice smooth flat surface. Fortunately, my neighbor dropped a hint that he actually had a drum sander he wasn't using anymore. For a couple of beers and I guess a future favor, he gave it to me on a sort of permanent loan. He's a retired carpenter and doesn't really have a use for it anymore. This is my first drum sander, but it's my favorite tool ever. Now I guess I just check Instagram while the sanding happens by itself in my shop. Once I got all the panels sanded up to where I was happy with them, I put my best saw blade in my saw and got on my crosscut sled to finish up the cuts. I just need to square up both edges so they take good joinery. I'll do a video on making a crosscut sled later, but I guess a quick hint is always make one bigger than you think you need, because you never know when you'll have to cut a panel like this. Even with that really nice table saw blade, I still had a little bit of saw marks, and those would hinder the glue from getting good connection, so I went over them with a hand plane just to make sure they were all exactly the same dimension, and to get rid of those saw marks. I also did one final check for a square. This is your last chance, there's no going back from here. And now, finally, after two or three days of stock prep, I'm able to lay out for my first joinery. I put together the whole case with hand-cut dovetails and through tenons. I really enjoyed the dichotomy of the really high-tech desktop computing and old-school hand-cut joinery. I've done plenty of case work in the past, but I've never made my panels out of such narrow strips. And I think the nature of that 
kind of made the panels warp a little bit more than I expected with humidity, and it presented a few challenges. But what's woodworking without a few challenges? I could have done these dovetails also with a router and a router jig, but I kind of wanted to show how you could accomplish such a large project with really simple tools. So here's one of the techniques I used to compensate for the bowing of the side panels. I believe they call this the YOLO method since you go all the way through in one cut, but you take a jointed piece of hardwood and you use that to reference your baseline across the entire board. Then when you attach it down with the clamps, it sort of clamps the bow out of the wood so that you have a nice flat square surface to reference off of. With the YOLO method, you definitely want to make sure that your wood is supported on the back, otherwise you're going to blow it out and ruin your dovetails. Other than that, it's just the same basic dovetail method I've already covered in a previous video. I did cheat just a little bit, and I used a router to clear some of the waste from the pins. It's no big deal, uh, just make sure you clamp that extra board on the edge so that you have something to reference off of. These weren't my best dovetails ever, but it was my first time working with sycamore and cherry for hand cut joinery. There was a lot of mating surface, so I took my time and you know really fine tuned every one of the dovetails. It took quite a bit of time, but in the end it was worth it. I got a, I got a pretty good fit. Now that I got all the dovetail surfaces cut, it was time to focus on the through tenons. These were sort of in the Japanese style, I was going to bevel the edges once they went through. I hogged out most of the waste with a router, and then I cleaned up the edges with a chisel. I ended up cutting these mortises just a little bit snug. I should have probably left a little bit of extra room. The cherry's quite a bit harder than the sycamore, so it does have a tendency to kind of blow out the other edge of the joint. And now that I have all my joinery cut, it was time to do the final glue up. For the final glue up, I did use epoxy. It gives you a lot more working time, and it's a little more forgiving in hiding mistakes and small imperfections. So I just slathered it on there. I'd only sanded up to 80 grit so far, so I still had a lot of sanding to do anyway. You can see here where I left a little bit of a gap in my panel. That was where the window was going to go to see the components eventually, so I figured why waste lumber? I just left a hole in the panel when I glued it up. And this is where the old adage comes in. How many clamps do you have? Probably three less than I need. While I let the epoxy set up, I worked on the logos for the front of the case. I've done a full video on this, so if you want more details, check that out, I'll link that above. And again, another special thanks to AMD, Gigabyte, and Corsair for helping me out with this build. I used an eighth inch straight cut bit and just patience and confidence to follow my stencils and make sure these logos turned out as good as I could. I actually sort of like the hand cut nature of doing these with just a router and a stencil. You could get a CNC shop to do these if you really want them to be perfect, but they're really good enough. I mean, it's not so rustic that it's like a log cabin sign. It's got just enough imperfections to let you know that it's made by hand. After I finished carving all the logos, I glued them to the front and back of the case. Then I used a flush trim router bit to get them just perfect with the edge of the case. I also made a bunch of templates for all the components I needed to cut out for, so I could use that flush trim router bit to cut perfect holes for the 140mm fans, the 240mm radiator, and also the holes for the power supply, motherboard, and graphics card coming out of the back. I know some modern cases claim to be toolless. This is definitely not a toolless case. After I cut all the holes for the I.O. and ventilation fans and whatnot, of course I had to cut a big window in the side because no matter how nice this computer case is, it's kind of pointless unless you can see all that sexy hardware. After I finished the last of the slots, I went ahead and rounded over all the corners. I thought about leaving them square, but the rounded over edge just looked a little bit more modern. I, I kind of like that. Then I had to sand, and sand, and sand. 
But really, this is the difference between a shop project and a piece of furniture is lots and lots of sanding. After I got it all sanded to 150 grit, I put on my first coat of shellac. It was a 3 to 1 mix of denatured alcohol to shellac. This really just serves as sort of a sanding filler. It also gives you the first look at how that grain is going to pop with the finish. I'm really pumped. After it was all sealed, I continued to build up coats of shellac. I started with a 3 to 1, then a 2 to 1, and a 1 to 1, sanding with 220 in between. And finally I was ready for a finished sanding at 400 grit before hitting with a scotch Brite pad, a double lot, sort of to start buffing out the finish. From there I went to 3M's white buffing pad, whatever it is, and I just hit the whole case with that as well. This really starts to bring out some sort of the sheen of the case. Some people might want to leave it here, but one more step that really brings out the shine and the finish. And that's paste wax. I built up a good coat of paste wax and let it all dry. And then I used a car buffing wheel actually to really buff out a shine in the finish. And after all that work, the finished result is just silky smooth. And finally, one of the most terrifying parts, drilling holes into a fully finished case. I just needed to drill the mounting holes for all the brass hardware to mount the covers for the fans were gonna come out. I didn't want to just have, you know, ugly fan covers showing, so I cut these wooden pieces out of a beautiful crotch cherry to cover them all up. To make it a little bit easier later, I went ahead and installed the fans and the radiator. That way I wouldn't have to mess with those later. The panels fit in with just a nice friction fit. Uh, if I ever needed to take these off, they could totally come out, and if I ever wanted to really affix them, I could put epoxy, but it's not like I'm going to be throwing this thing around, so the friction fits just fine. So that's all the wooden components done with this build, and I really love the way it came together. I like the contrast between the uh, cherry and the sycamore, especially with the quarter sawn sycamore. It gives it a really nice look. If you want to see the rest of the video, I'm actually putting the computer hardware in there and running some benchmarks. I should be releasing that in the next couple months. I'm waiting on a certain special piece of hardware from AMD. Anyways, thanks for watching today, and if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please drop me a like below and consider subscribing. And if you have some questions about this build, want to know any details about the nuance of building a wooden PC case, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to respond to those as quickly as I can. I love hearing from you guys in the comments. Thanks for watching today, and remember, keep your tools sharp, keep your mind even sharper.